I ask a 30,000 foot overview? Why do I ask them specifically what challenges they've been facing? Like there's a reason to those questions and you need the answer to them. Like this ain't math class. Like, like sure, we can give the equations, but you got to plug and play and you got to understand why this works. Sales is sales at the end of the day, but if you can show true value and you know that niche well and you study it, I think ultimately that's what's going to make you be successful. Whatever you do in your agency, you need to duplicate it and do it for your clients. I like that. I feel like I'm pretty good at closing. No, you're not. You're probably ass at closing. You just <laughs> close a couple of clients and uh, there you go. For those, you know, looking to strike 10K a month in their first month, what was the hardest part there? And then what was the hardest part maybe from 10 to 30K if you can break it down for us? What really helped me with my discovery was... I'm excited to have... You guys get a good treat, some sauce, some gems from Tyler Weatherby. His story is pretty remarkable. He's an awesome dude, an awesome father, and uh, just went all in. So Tyler, my man, welcome to this student interview. I'm excited to ask you a lot of questions and get to know you like everyone else. Yeah, man. Me too. Solid, man. So yeah, why don't you go ahead and give us a quick overview? Uh, I, I sound like I'm doing an intro call with you. Um, yeah. <laughs> overview of- um, I love it. Of your agency, um, you know, how long you've been in the agency space, what is your niche, and we'll dive right into the journey. Yeah, for sure. So I started my agency about a year and a half ago, and I started doing like SaaS, so software as a service. I thought it was like, oh man, it's a super cool. I had a buddy doing it and he's collecting, you know, he, he was doing pretty good and, uh, you know, it's pretty hands off. I found out about Joel. I think I saw his one of his master classes. And then I heard about Agency Lab and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Let me go see what this is all about. So I booked a call, got into Agency Lab, saw people were selling their services for like two to three K a month. I was like, damn, I want to do that too. I don't want to sell these $300 a month packages. Um, I want to do those ones and do bigger numbers. So <clears throat> I, uh, I started doing a little bit of SaaS, didn't really have a niche. And then when I did start to do lead generation, I picked the med spa niche. Didn't work out to me for me so hot. And I, I think it, I, I already had a couple of med spa clients at the time under the software. So I figured, hey, why not do the ads? Mm -hmm. But it didn't work out, didn't like it. And so I switched. Um, that was when uh, I was on one of your soccer calls. And Tony Lee was in there and he had just got us started with his agency and he was in the detail niche and I ran out of leads to call during the call. So I said, Hey, anybody got leads for me? And then Tony sent me one of his and I almost closed the guy on the phone. I was like, wow, this is, this is way better than med spa. <laughs> so I had ultimately switched over the detail niche because I'm ultimately a car guy. I'm a car enthusiast. I can speak their language. I can talk their talk. I, I do detail my own car. So that's when I went to the detail niche. From there, I picked up a few clients. Um, one of them stuck around for like seven months. February of this year, I kind of let things go. Um, I'm actually a pilot. So that is like my background. My career has always been flying airplanes. I've worked at the airlines for seven years. Um, I, did I do private charters and now I just do contract flying every once in a while. And uh, I was like, man, I need to get back onto the agency game. So um, I kind of got into a weird situation where my job that I had lined up for me kind of fell through and I kind of got screwed out of a job. And so I said, mm -hmm. fuck it. I need to go run ads. I need to go make some money. I got two kids to take care of. And so I went and launched my ads at 20 bucks a day. Um, I went to my buddy's studio, recorded it. I said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right. Cause I already knew running the ads that I had prior I got a bunch of garbage leads. Nobody was converting. Mm. And I said, I need to do something different. And obviously with you guys all in the agency space, video ads crush. So I came up with a, a script. I came up with a new offer, went and filmed it, paid to actually got my video edited for free. <laughs> From the same, I got a free trial. I'm a big time negotiator. I love negotiating. And uh, I got my video created. August 18th, I launched my ads. Um, I started getting a couple of leads here and there, a little bit more leads. A few days go by, closed my first client for like a thousand bucks just to kind of get started, get my feet back, uh, get my feet wet, get back together. And uh, from there on, man, it just kind of took off. And I basically went from having one client August 18th to having like, I want to say 11 clients. Mm -hmm. I went from zero to 30K in 30 days. 
Yeesh. So yeah, they just did. It was a snowball effect. And now when I look back at it, I'm just like 10 K really is nothing. I mean, I closed 10 K this week. So <laughs> right. uh, it's like, I don't know. It It's, you, you got to put work in. It's not easy by any means. It is not easy. It, it's definitely difficult. I spent my time 6 a.m. until midnight some days inside of my office, just working, 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 working. But yeah. that's what it takes, man. I had to do something. I got I got a family to take care of. So I have pretty much replaced my income from the flying world. And uh, now I see the real potential. I have new problems. Got to come up with new solutions. And so now I'm on track to do 50K this month. And then hopefully by December, I'm doing 100K. Solid, man. I love the story. I love the journey. Got to love every part of it. You know, that's why we're here. So appreciate you, Tyler. There's a lot of things I didn't know and that I remember. Um, you were in SAS. I didn't, I forgot that you did Met Spa um, at one point. Mm-hmm. I didn't know the story about Tony Lee. <laughs> that's funny. I didn't oh, know. Oh, you didn't? No, that's bro, that, that story from Tony Lee is crazy. It, it, it was like it was meant to be for you, bro. Like, like imagine if you wouldn't hop on on that call. I'd probably still be uh, crazy, in some other bro. niche and not even doing what I'm doing right now. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Or, yeah, maybe it took a little while to, you know, get to where you are now. But um, and that's awesome how it kind of aligned with your background experience. And, you know, there's a lot to take away and that we can unpack here and Obviously, I would like your take on it, but like it, I would, I would assume that it was really helpful to be around the car detailing industry prior to working with them as a marketing agency. Would you say? Yeah. So being involved in that niche definitely helps me out. Like I got M Performance flag behind me on my Zoom calls. Like people know that I'm a car guy based off of the information that I give them. I can speak their language. I I know about all of the ins and outs of the detail industry. So like don't like sales is sales at the end of the day, but if you can show true value and you know that niche well and you study it, I think ultimately that's what's going to make you be successful. So don't sleep on studying up that niche for sure. I just happen to know a little bit more about it because I'm involved in the car community. So if you haven't picked a niche, that's one of the biggest factors that even Joel Kaplan mentions is like, well, what do you have experience in? Maybe you were physician's assistant and maybe dentistry might be your move or you were once a personal trainer like I was and you go into gyms. So it has some weight to it. Um, and it helps you get that edge and familiarity with these guys too. So there's a lot. I do that. I, I do that today. Now. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, other shops in my area and I'm just going to go drive up to them and go talk to the owner and just be overly curious. You know, I, I think one of the, my struggles was like, because Joel did preach this, you know, just call them up and say like, Hey, I want to learn about your business. You know, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just want to know. I'm curious. And people like to talk about themselves that that's true. And it works. And I'm going to do that now because I'm starting to work with shops that are doing million dollars a year. Like I'm not doing these one time or one man shit, but one man band kind of detailers. Like these are people who have teams, they've got multiple employees and ultimately that's where I'm gearing my agency for. Like I'm going to have restrictions. Like I'm not trying to sign up every client. I just had two calls today that I decline because they're just not ready yet. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to, and it's a lot of work to be honest, but when you can talk about that industry and you can find, find out what these people are doing, you know, talk to the, talk to your clients, talk to other people in the industry, get information, just be overly curious and you're going to find the answers to what you need. Bro, that's fire. Like that is exactly, I remember you're bringing me back to my old days where I had to learn about the gym industry, like gym launch, you know, and I remember we're doing a quick workout with actually the gym owner, my first client. <laughs> I was actually talking to a lot. I was probably boring him out, but you know, I was asking him questions like, why would you do this? Why do you use Zen Planner? What other softwares have you used and hasn't worked? What is the hardest part about getting back to lead? Oh, you know, you don't have anyone at the front that like you start to hear what their problems mm-hmm. are, what keeps them up at night just by talking to these guys. Again, just it's no different than us talking to our friends and them telling us what their problems are at the moment and them wanting to get that out. Cause to be honest, sometimes they have no one to, they have no outlet. Yeah. Be, so and, and the yeah. best way to go around that is when you start taking more intro calls, you're going to start to understand what problems they face me. by, 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 you're good. by, by you 
fucking up the process Mm -hmm. you know like what i i hire isas now because i realized that the problem when i started running ads for my first couple clients i was just giving them a text message to have them call the lead well, that's the problem. They don't know sales. They don't know how to follow up. They don't know how to nurture. And so I'm like, well, why don't I just do that? And so now I hire ISAs to do all that for them because that is a a severe problem in this industry. Hmm. Like people just don't, they don't have time to do it. And I mean, whatever you do in your agency, you need to duplicate it and do it for your clients. I like that. Anytime you get a lead that comes through, you call them within five minutes. If they don't answer, you call them again. They don't answer, you text them, you leave a voicemail. All you have to do is just duplicate your agency into their business and just reframe the wording. Well and then said. ultimately with, with these other problems arising, you implement questions in your discovery call or in your in your demo call to ask those right questions to really find the root cause of their problems. So whatever, I don't know what you guys have for resources right now, but for like a, a discovery call, like you get something from like Joe Potion or, you know, mm-hmm. from Sergio or somebody, you know, that that's literally just a framework. It's just a framework. You just kind of discovering you're going to have to come up with the questions yourself. So don't take everything given to you at face value. Like you really have to dive in. What really helped me with my discovery was looking at the question on your discovery call and breaking that question down. Why do I, why do I ask a 30,000 foot overview? Why do I ask them specifically what challenges they've been facing? Like there's a reason to those questions and you need the answer to that. And so if you structure, if you break down your discovery questions, you need to, I, I even have it somewhere on one of my notepads. I literally wrote down every single question that I have on my discovery. I answered the reason why I'm asking it. And then I also did another variation of that question, not using the same words, but how can I ask it differently? Mm-hmm. And that's going to like really strategically uh, implement into your discovery call to where you can start thinking on the go and thinking on the spot and versus reading from a script and sounding like a robot. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's the last thing people want. Um, especially if you're doing an intro where typically it's held over phone, they only have one thing to really hear you over, which is the questions you ask and the tone and the way you ask it. And that's fire. You know, the biggest takeaway I want people to have from there is get so good. Like Tyler, like he didn't just, yes, you got the reps and experience right and that comes but like you dissected to its core fundamentals of why we're asking these questions which rarely people even want to understand they just try to grab the formula sheet and go like this ain't math class like like sure we can give the equations but you got to plug and play and you got to understand why this works right and so Mm -hmm. you know being able to ask yourself those questions like why would i ask this what's the goal behind this why is this going to help me see if i can help them in their in their industry like And now you'll be able to have those conversations, not only more comfortably, but with more confidence, because you know how, like why you're asking these questions. And sometimes we love, like it helps to justify them too. Like that's a small part about what you said. Like the reason why I'm asking is just to really make sure we're able to help you. If not, I'll point you towards the right direction. Like those things matter a lot. A doctor's not just going to ask you like, yeah, so how's your day been? (laughs) I do want to shift gears really quick. I want to talk to you about what was the hardest part so far in your agency journey? Like what was the hardest part? Say for those, you know, looking to strike 10K a month in their first month, what was the hardest part there? And then what was the hardest part maybe from 10 to 30K, if you can break it down for us? Taking that next step. Next step. Moving forward, that was the hardest part getting to 10K. I get it. I've been there. I've done that. I can sit here today and say, yeah, 10K means nothing. You're going to talk to a lot of other agency owners that have made it past that 10K mark. But I promise you, once you make it past that, you're going to look back at yourself and say, 10K isn't shit. That was easy. It's the right steps to get there. For me, my biggest struggle, I feel like, is um and and i'll break it down i'll break it down to you uh in detail but the hardest part was actually pressing play on my ads i get it a lot of you guys are out there you know you're just starting out you might not have the money but you like literally any kind of if you're not doing ads then you you better be going big on something else cold email cold Cold dms cold calling whatever the source may be but you gotta go big once you figure that piece of the pie, you can start implementing next steps. But I will say ads is by far king. Fucking love ads. I started spending 20 bucks a day and now I'm spending $200 a day. That's awesome. I uh, I resonate with that a lot. Um, I'll share my part too. Uh, I wasted, I'll say I wasted two months because of that fear. 
um i was primed and ready i had the finances way more than um i was comfortable even spending a month like i was able to have money i literally so august for me was a struggle dude i had two mortgage payments to make i had food to put on the table um i mean yeah i had savings i mean fucking airline pilot but yeah like i didn't want to dip into that man i didn't want to spend that kind of money i would i just put myself in a position like what would i do if i was at the very bottom like and this is all the money that i had i literally took out like i went and maxed out my credit card or you know put everything on credit go take i was looking for personal loans like just so i can go spend money on ads because i was like this is what i have to do in order for me to succeed And if you can put your mind, if you're under 10K, you need to put your mindset at a level like I'm at rock bottom. Like, this is it. I have to do something. And if you can put your mindset, you will work harder than anybody else. I promise you. You will get it done. Enough said. That part. Damn. I kind of want to leave off that, but I know we we want to cover a little bit more. But that is exactly what it's about. It's just going all in, you know, betting on yourself. Yeah, I didn't even know that, Tyler. I appreciate you. And I know Nathan Bentley last week, two weeks ago, I think, mentioned that he went all in that way. He he took it all loan from Stripe. He, he actually, you know, took a loan because he knew that was a game. And yeah, don't get me wrong. He, like, made, he made me double my ad spend. I was on a video chat with him uh, uh, like two or three weeks ago. And right. he was like, you need to spend more money on ads. I was like, I don't know, man. He's like, do it. He's like, you won't do it. I was like, okay, I'll do it. And I went and doubled it right then and there. He was like, my man <laughs> that sounds exactly like nathan bro that is exactly it's like you won't <laughs> and, then, and then okay so here's the thing when you start have if you have a good offer and you have a good uh video or a good ad that's performing you definitely need to double down on it because when when you when you double your ads your influx of messages and leads just come through the door and it's it's very overwhelming but when you do that, it's also kind of a sense of relief because you're just like, now I know my numbers. I know I'm closing at like 50%. If I get 10 people, that means I'm closing five of them. Exactly. Reverse engineering your numbers is key in keeping track of it. And like, I would say big, like biggest takeaway for me is start tracking your numbers at an early age of your agency, your KPIs, even if you have to manually type that. Because that's something that I did not do at the very beginning. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm like, I feel like I'm pretty good at closing. No, you're not. You're probably ass at closing. You just <laughs> close a couple of clients and uh, there you go. But if you have your numbers, that's how you're ultimately going to scale. And so now I've even implemented that to my clients' accounts where we're tracking their KPIs so we know how to scale that. Yeah, well said. You know, it, it happens everywhere. You know, people are like, you know, uh, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a good three point shooter in basketball. It's like, all right, let me look at your numbers. Oh, you're 20, not like you're 20 percent three point shooting. Like, Jesus, Christ. like what? So or like they're 100 percent, but they only shot one time. It's like, oh, um, we have a question from Livio. Tyler, how's the structure of your current team looking like? OK. And how many team members do you think you need to bring on to hit the 100K a month by the end of this? year that's a good question right now i have a partner not official unofficial partner he's very 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 good at operations sucks at sales i'm good at sales and managing teams uh like people making sure things get done so he takes care of every time i close a deal i don't touch that client again all i have all i do with that client is message them whenever they text my phone or i do checkup calls other than that i'm closing but he has taken so much off of my plate and I'm super thankful for that. I'm not saying go get a partner right now and you need to do it and understand the process first. Um, I wouldn't look at getting any, if you're under 10 K, like you don't need a team member. I have a partner who kind of takes the onboarding. We have another person who does pretty much all the setups so he can kind of manage that quadrant of uh, that section of the agency. I have a full-time editor I have a media buyer and uh, we have two ISAs looking for a third. Um, We had three, but he didn't work out. So we have to replace him. Um, As far as getting to a hundred K a month, I mean, I think, I mean, Nathan made it to a hundred K and it's just him and an appointment setter and then fulfillment. Yeah. Like ISAs. So it it depends on your, your structure, man. Like, I don't know if there's necessarily like the right number for that. For me to be at 100K, I think the only other people that I would have to bring on board is, is just more fulfillment, like more ISAs. Yeah, that's it. Just making sure they're able to 
fulfill, not make that a bottleneck. Yeah, it, it definitely that comes down to your structure, but I've seen time and time again, and hopefully you guys will see too, all these seven figures, they come in different shapes and sizes. Like Amin Gotti, let's bring him. It was him, Blake, and Alex Ivanov. Just those three. End of story. And then you got people like Kara McMaster, um, Gil Valerio. They had teams. They had everything structured so that they can still focus and catch this, at least when they are good at this, still focus on one thing, which is sales. Because that's the revenue driving. That's obviously the thing that's going to move the needle forward in your business, right? And so you notice how many times, unless really you really want to delegate sales and find a partner for that, many times that's the last thing you wanted to um, delegate because that's moving the needle forward, as I mentioned. So yeah, I'm, I kind of want to, I like that question, Livio. Anyone else here have any questions? I'm going to quickly check the group chat and see if anyone has anything. No? Yvonne? Bro. Yeah, and to be clear, I'm a very lazy person. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, hence why I became a pilot. Like, I I, I don't like to work. I, flying airplanes is fun. It's easy. I basically just got really good at sales so that way I can collect more money so I can pay people to do the other stuff that I don't want to. He just seems to focus on the right things to help him be lazy and focus on the things he wants. Yes. To. I'm not saying like, I'm not like, oh, <laughs> I'm going to sit here, sit in my chair. I mean, there's obviously work that needs to be done, but like, do I want to really set up sub accounts and, you know, collect people's information and, you know, start building out creatives and like, no, I don't want to do that. I know it needs to be done. So I close somebody, I just paid somebody else to do it. There you go. But awesome. you, I would recommend doing it for yourself. That way you understand the process. Absolutely. Get in the, get in the trenches, right? Um, there's so many benefits behind it, whether it's sales itself, fulfillment. So you know how to look over people's shoulder and you know what to expect. And you're going to know what you want to do and what you don't want to do. That's why um, my partner and I work so well together because he does not want to do sales. He's like, dude, I'm <laughs> enjoying so much just doing operations and you know, managing a team. I'm like, cool, man. Great. How about it? Cause I hate doing that. <laughs> I yeah. You guys are like perfect, <laughs> perfect for each other, complimentary to a T. So that's solid right there. Um, mm -hmm. All right, man. Well, we covered a lot. We, you know, your whole story was like amazing. Even for me to listen to it. It's amazing to see your growth, man. I'm excited to see where you're going to take this off into 2024, man. So my last question was like, what are your, you know, knowing that you've been through agency lab, like, what are your thoughts about like people um, teetering or thinking about seeing Joel and Noah or whatever offer he has? Like, what are your thoughts about, you know, those people thinking about joining agency lab, knowing what you've been through or what you've gone through in that program? Joining agency lab, I would not be where I'm at without it. Um, I think it's a very, a very good system. I would highly recommend joining purely for the fact that you, you, you network and you build connections with other people. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have found my partner unless it was for agency lab. You know, you have a lot of these other agency owners that are very like-minded and they're all doing the same stuff, but you know, you kind of feed off each other. Like at some point, you know, you can't have a million dollar business by yourself. You're going to have to partner with somebody or, you know, resort or find some other people to, you know, work for you and agency lab. I think my biggest, uh, my biggest takeaway from agency lab is just being able to have that network. And that's what I went in for. I didn't, I didn't know about lead generation before agency lab. Ultimately I got into it, but I went there because I wanted resources and I wanted to network. And ultimately that's what I got out of it. How to run an agency. Great. If it's just purely networking. Great. If it's resources. Great. Because I could think back on a few different occasions where if I needed to hire a media buyer, I wouldn't know where to go. If I wanted to hire a ISA, I wouldn't know where to go. You know, and I and if I did go find it on Google, I'd probably be overpriced. <laughs> so obviously when you become a entrepreneur, you know, at some point you're gonna start looking at your numbers and saying, Why am I spending so much? money on this and you start to look on how to reduce your costs and uh, i think agency lab is a very very great very great tool um and so i think everybody should join honestly appreciate that you know for those who stayed on victor burnt yvonne even those who just joined um glad you guys were able to make the uh, latter half of this any final thoughts on tyler anything you want to leave um people who watch this live stream later um or people right here of course um, what do you want to like kind of lead them off with? 
Um, anybody in here have any questions? Yeah. Her? Anyone here have any questions for Tyler, his story, where you're currently at? You know, definitely we, you can tailor it to your agency too. That's what we're here for. Yeah, Jawad, see your hands raised. Yeah, Tyler, I just had a quick question. How did you manage timing when you was doing piloting and then and uh, your agency stuff as well? How did you manage your time? Um, so my schedule was a little unique. Uh, I worked seven days on, seven days off, and I was home every night. When I started my agency, I wasn't actually at the airlines. I was actually an instructor for the airline. So I was teaching all the new hires how to fly the jet. So my schedule was pretty consistent. Like I worked five hour days. And so the rest of my time I spent with my agency. I never had like a real, it wasn't real nine to five job, but like being a pilot, you work maybe, you know, anywhere from four hours a day to 10 hours a day. But it was just the situation that I was in. I was able to manage both the agency and, and flying. It really depends on like how you can manage your time to make the most out of it. I mean, I wouldn't be spending $200 a day on ads if I was still at the other job because leads come through and you got to call them. I was kind of doing like a part-time agency thing when I was working as an instructor and flying. Okay. And how were you managing your outreach on them days? Were you just doing cold emails, cold DMs? Ads. I see. I don't do any. I actually have my... uh Cold email outreach starts in about seven days. I'm going to be sending out like, I think, thirty to 40,000 emails a month. Yeah, I will have another source, but I couldn't pay for that unless I started closing clients. Okay. Uh, but all of my stuff came through ads. Um, well, um, how many days did you run ads for, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Don't stop. You know, you know what's funny is when I started my agency, the whole reason why I wanted to do this was because my mom was a single mom growing up. She took mm -hmm. care of me and my sister. I want to retire her. That is my first, like, once I get to a, a certain point where I can just give her 5K a month, like, she's she's done. Yeah, she's good. I also wanted to buy a Lamborghini. Um, my mindset has changed so much because now that I have all these leads coming through and I have all these deals that I'm closing and I'm just like, fuck the Lambo. I'm, I'm spending that money on ads. <laughs> Dang, I, that, yeah. I love ads because at some point you're going to get to a, where, like you reinvest, 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 reinvest. Like I barely pull any money out for like myself and my family. Like I pull out enough for us to live and survive and pay the bills, everything goes back in. Like the moment I can spend 500 bucks a day on ads, I'm doing it. But that's just because that works for me. This is my niche. This is like my ultimate avenue. I feel like I can, you know, I have a really good funnel. I'm going to test email. I'm going to see how it works. Ads are a great way to start getting clients. Even if you have to start out at 20 bucks a day, do it. Hey, how you doing? I joined a little later. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you might have already answered this, but do you have any tips for people just starting out getting to from like first client to getting to like 10K, anything you learned, anything um, you could share with us about getting to that first 10K mark? Ads. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, um, yeah. So uh, what what's your niche? Um, my niche right now is hospitality. Okay. And how are you currently prospecting? Uh, I started in the hospitality industry, so I made a lot of connections there, uh, people I know, and then just kind of word of mouth and doing doing a lot of free work for the first like few months. Okay. So you've been doing it for a few months for free? Yeah, I did a couple free projects. Like I would do like a little project for them and then I would get them to sign a contract with me for like a retainer. So are you currently making money from those people right now? Yes, I am. And, and then how now transitioning out of the hospitality, uh, I partnered with this guy I used to do marketing with. Uh, we're kind of doing med spas now. He has about okay. 10 a month. I've been, he put me on a retainer. So I've been doing work with him and now we're signing new clients on this month. Oh cool, man. So no, not yet. Where are you guys at revenue wise? We have 10 clients that do, we have different retainers set up. So some of them are doing like $500 because we just do ads for them or we do like a website things like that. So right now we're floating around 6K mark. And so it's just a variation between like websites, software, ads. Yeah, setting up email. Yeah, setting up like email lists for them, everything like that. 
kind of just do small projects for them and then every month and then we kind of just grow them as much as we can. I can relate to that and I'm going to use like uh, an analogy. I used to be super like I, I feel like I'm a pretty good innovator and I have like all these different ideas like my whole life I had like that entrepreneurial mindset and I really had some good ass ideas even to this day like I'll, I'll write them down I put them on my phone and the problem that I had was not actually committing to one thing only. And so even when I first started my agency, I, th I thought of like all these different business ideas and all these different avenues I could generate money. The biggest problem I had was just not focusing on one thing. And I feel like that's kind of relatable to the situation that you're in because you're doing lead gen, you're doing websites, you're doing software, whatever it may be. I would say, if you're going to pick that niche, focus on one thing and then branch out from there. Right. So for you guys, if it's like, obviously the, the bread and butter right there is going to be the lead generation, focus on lead generation and focus on fulfillment and getting people results. I think that would be ideal from there. Once you kind of got that cracked and dialed in, start offering website services or upsells or cross sales. Gotcha. Yeah. That's I definitely I feel like, yeah. I definitely feel like that's what's uh, holding us back because then you end up doing a bunch of different projects for different clients and then you can't really focus on one thing. Yeah. And, get... and, and I, I actually ran into that situation recently when I first started, when I, so I don't know if you heard the background story, but August 18th, I launched ads. I went from zero to 30 K a month, but I came up with an offer that was so ridiculous. That's kind of bite me in the butt. It's because I offered so much freaking value and I can fulfill on it, but it's costing me extra money. So now all these new clients that I signed on board, they don't get that same offer, but I have a system that works and it leads me to ultimately um, being able to upsell those other services to the, to that client, but focus on one thing and just run with it. Once you crack that code and you, you can bring fulfillment, that's when you start focusing on other stuff. Um, and I'm not saying that you don't have to do that, but like, even with a website, you can go find some people in the med spa that have really trash websites and just go create a couple of templates and say, Hey, I have this free website for you. If you want, you know, go hire a VA three bucks an hour to go cross fill it with their information and give it to them and say, Hey, by the way, you know, and we, we, we also do ads like, and give them the pitch. So for you specifically, man, I would focus on just one thing. All righty. Thank you. Awesome, Tyler. Appreciate it. Jawad. Yeah. Your hands up again. What's up, man? Yeah. Well, Tyler, I just have one question. I, re I realized you said you mentioned um, you had a funnel. Is uh, When you're doing paid ads, do you generate that to a landing page or do you just do it on Facebook and get that information on there? Honest answer. If you're not running ads right now, I wouldn't even focus on that. Um, don't right. even look at, don't I, try both man try both when you're ready to launch ads which you should be doing tomorrow um just to run it to a lead form because those are going to give you instant results any monkey can literally run ads on facebook i was so scared pressing that play button and after now i'm telling you the water's warmer on the other side <laughs> i know you're cold you're in the dark you're in the unknown you know it's like super foggy you can't see two feet ahead of you, but you have all these other agency owners that all have one thing in common. They're all running ads and they're just waiting for you to come sail across the water mm. into the light, man. Yep. <laughs> but you're never going to know until you actually start testing. So just run a lead form, man, run a lead form. And then while you're getting uh, calls and closing deals, go build out a sales funnel. Um, but you will get leads. I, I would promise you. At 20 bucks a day to a lead form, name, phone number, email, even if it's that simple, you will get people to opt in. Yeah. Make then sure. You start, yeah. Then yeah. you can start testing funnels. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even that, like, make sure you do have an offer that's proven to work. And a lot of times we know this because we've done organic outreach for the offer and we're like, man, okay. A lot of people are saying yes in the emails. Let's take this up a notch and put it on steroids per se. You know, that's, that's exactly when we say we have a proven need, uh, proven offer. And then it's really just figuring out which again, agency lab does help a lot, which is proven video creatives or video frameworks that work to grab people's attention. And if I can give you a quick hack, just watch what Joel does and imitate the formula there. Watch what Tyler Weatherby does. Watch what Ben Smith does. They're not the same. They're, the framework is, there's a pattern to it. So you know, those other things are important to get, draw people's attention. But like Tyler Weatherby was talking about, just keep it simple 
and just really run the ads, run a good offer, get them on a lead from first and you're good. Then you can worry about those other things. And if I'm going to be uh, fully transparent with you guys, I don't have an offer. I have zero offer. I have zero promises. I have zero guarantee. Hey, that's fire. And I'm still closing people. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on 2024. And this yeah. is just based off of my niche. What I did is I, uh, <clears throat> I came up with this crazy offer, right? I thought it was crazy at least. And my offer was, I'm going to pay for your ad spend. That's the hook. Right? Oh shit. They're going to pay for my ad spend. Cool. I'm going to sign up with them. I'm going to call. I'm going to book them. Hop on the call. Go through the demo. Now, the only way for them to actually get the ad spend credit is if they purchase my PIF. Have to pay for three months in advance. That's how you get the ad spend credit. That is how I drove, drove my offer. My guarantee, the only guarantee that I run really is if you don't match our revenue after the 90 days, then we just work for free. Pretty much, yeah. And that was it. I'm not guaranteeing 25 coding jobs, 50 coding jobs, a thousand jobs guaranteed. Because what I've noticed doing competitor research is if you go and you look at these comments from your competitors of people commenting on these posts, at, especially in my niche, all I see is bad, bad stuff. Like people are saying, oh, scam, like this is stupid. I've done it before, da, 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 da. So my biggest takeaway from learning all of this is you need to be innovative and you have to create your own offer. I don't close people based off of me saying, promising them I'm going to get them 20 coding jobs. I, I give them a realistic mindset of what it takes to be successful. And that is my pitch deck. This is 2024. Everything is on social media. And if you guys can create some sort of system, I'm not going to tell you exactly what my system is, but I want you to think big. Like what, like uh, I, I went to uh, ag the agency lab live last year. And one thing that I took away from that was uh, J.R. Rivera. He said how to build a crazy offer. And that has stuck with me ever since. What you do is you sit there and you take out a piece of paper and you write down, what can I do for my clients? What if I could, what if I could actually, you know, provide a ceramic coating product for them? What if I could actually go detail their vehicle? What if I could post on their social media for them? What if I could find a videographer to, for them? What if I could do this? And then you start writing these lists down and then you break down each line item and you say, well, can I do this? And if not, how can I? And you just break it down. That's how I created my offer. And so what I do is on my, on my, uh, on my demo, I basically, like, I don't even use a pitch deck really anymore. I just <laughs> talk to them. I kind of just explain the process of what it takes to actually run a successful business in 2024 that ultimately triggers in their mind, like, yeah, that fucking makes sense. And one question I always, because I'm really heavy on the social media aspect. Like if, if, uh, if you're not regularly posting content on your social media and there's agencies that just do content creation for people. Mm -hmm. But what I did is I kind of lumped everything together. So we take over your social media. We'll post like two to three times a week for you. We'll have our editor edit all the videos. I will send you like a strategy every single month on like what content to shoot. Because here's the idea. When somebody sees your ad or your competitor's ad or, you know, your client's ad, those people will click on your profile. I'll They're going to. They're going to check you out. They're going to do your due diligence. And if you're trying to sell a five-star service and you're posting 99 cent Chinese food, they're not going to, they're not going to convert. Content is king. Why do you think video ads are doing so, so well right now? So figure out a way to convey that message to your clients, offer it to them and close them on it. That's why I don't have an offer. I mean, I do have an offer, but I don't have really any kind of guarantee. I just walk them through like a methodical process of like, damn, that actually makes sense. Yeah, you're right. Because okay. it works. You need to have brand. You need to have de brand development. You need to have the leads. But the leads aren't going to convert if you don't have a brand. How do you build trust? How do you build rapport? Like Alex Hermosi is really fucking good at explaining that. Having a mini core offer and then having a core offer. Like all of it makes sense. Go, all of it makes go sense. Go buy this book, man. I'm telling you, it, mm. it it's it's cool, man. So 
my biggest uh my biggest thing for you guys that are just starting out is be creative be innovative do not copy paste copy wow. the framework but develop your own system because i promise you i've already had it happen i've had someone copy my script i've had someone copy my um my like my literal video script it's pretty identical to it copied my offer and it's not working for them so innovate um innovate you just you just have to be innovative man like really like really just take that time to write down on a piece of paper sit for 30 minutes develop your offer um and, and be different you know look at the niche that you're in you know how many guaranteed appointments dude that's that offer has been ran for so long you need to put a twist to it yeah, label like it differently like, vehicle, like how you get those appointments like that was a huge craze last year it was tiktok ads that yeah. dude that that allowed me to scale to 20k 15k it was crazy because it was different um yeah usually it's the vehicle that's going to be better or like the different the, the differentiator because new is always better than better we want to remember that so 100 percent. like like tyler said sometimes the new is and i'll i'll give you the guys the secrets because i know sergio said this so i know it's really significant that's going to be true you can trust sergio we can always trust sergio trust me um the next offer might be downplaying offers because they are just so tired of seeing it now that you're like look we don't want to run an offer because we know what that means like he's always he always says like it's a fugaz it, it doesn't mean anything and so guess what that's gonna that's honesty in sales that's winning and now you're different. Even that is something that, you know, can get you more leads than the person offering 60, like, or 20 appointments, right? So, Tyler, man, I know we're running up on the last couple minutes here. What is the the final thing you want to share with us? Go run that I'll spend money on your ads offer. Any niche. Dude, that's solid, man. Do it. I mean, I would. It, it works clearly. I like my my offer was I'll spend a thousand dollars on your ads. That was it. And then I went from zero to now eighteen clients. Just like just that. out of curiosity, how long did that take you? Um, I went from so since August eighteenth. August eighteenth, I launched my ads. So two months. Um and. Really, it was the first 30 days mm -hmm. that I went from zero to 30K. Um, and then my ads started to get very saturated and uh, they were getting very stale. So I wasn't getting as many leads. So I probably went like two weeks without getting very many leads. And then I went and made a new ad. And then now that one's performing. So um, I'm on track to hit 50K this month. So, I mean, realistically, yeah. Um, 30 days, zero to 30K, but you have to recycle your ads too. So keep that in mind. That's Don't good. use the same creative. It's not going to work. It's just like your clients. Ads are ever changing. It's like moving sand. You got to like, cycle it out. Appreciate it, Tyler. Um, Yeah, I appreciate it. I would say the, the, the biggest thing that I would say to leave you guys with is mindset and innovation. Those are the two biggest factors between you actually being where you're at right now to actually be becoming successful yeah like yourself you went all in that was the i went all in you went all in dude that's what um the last person i brought on two weeks ago cole cran said you went all in and so there's a huge pattern behind that guys if you're not all in then you're doing something wrong if not in all in on ads as tyler would probably specifically say then you're doing something wrong but guys i appreciate you tyler for hopping on here uh tyler weatherby guys he's gonna scale he's gonna get to 100k it's just a matter of when um or how much money he's gonna put into ads let's put it that way but yeah guys i appreciate you staying on here uh if you guys have extra questions man i mean where can they reach out to you if, if it's fine you know to connect uh yeah you just find me on facebook just I'll, shoot drop, me I'll drop i'll shoot, drop shoot me a dm on my facebook that's probably the uh, best way to reach me i got a question for you are you uh are you going to agency live well, I booked a call or Joel actually booked a call with me for the 28th because I was like, dude, I don't even know like 
at this point, like, how do I even take four days off? Ah, I see. I don't even know what to do. Like, I, especially at the rate that we're scaling, I don't, like, I don't want to stop. I want to go. I really do. But I just don't. He was like, I'll show you how. So I see. Okay. I'll probably, I will probably end up going. All right. I look forward to seeing you again, man. But I get what you're saying. I mean, it, it makes sense. It's a good, it's a good yeah, excuse. I'm, my, my pedal is full throttle right now and I'm not stopping. <laughs> there we go neither should any one of us here so appreciate you tyler again thanks for everyone for staying on and everyone watching the live stream we'll see you guys around peace see you guys